So you are trying to lose weight or gain weight. And you always hear all these influencers saying, do this, do that, use my diet, use my promotional code, and you still can't lose weight. Today we are going to talk about weight loss, focusing on two aspects, calories counting and the role of hormones, and how you should start understanding your body before starting this process. Let's dive in. Hormones play a significant role in body weight. They regulate nearly every aspect of health, including metabolism, hunger, fullness, etc. Several hormones play a significant role in body weight and can affect weight loss or gain. Here are some of them. Insulin. Produced by your pancreas, insulin promotes the storage of glucose in the muscles, liver and fat cells or fatty cells for later use. Insulin resistance, a condition where your cells stop responding to insulin, has been linked to obesity. Leptin. This hormone signals your body and your brain that you've had enough to eat, inhibiting food intake. Estrogen and testosterone. High body fat levels can affect many hormones, including estrogen and testosterone. Obestatin. This hormone is believed to suppress appetite, opposing the actions of another hormone called glarin. Glarin is also known as the hunger hormone. Glarin stimulates the hypothalamus, an area of the brain responsible for hunger. Remember, maintaining a balanced hormonal state is crucial for healthy weight management. Always consult with a healthcare professional for personalized advice. Determining hormone levels in your body typically involves a series of tests conducted by a healthcare professional. Here are some common methods. Blood tests. Blood tests are often used to check hormonal levels. These tests can detect fertility problems where you are in your menstrual cycle, many, many things. They can also play a role in diagnosing medical conditions such as thyroid disease. Providers may specifically check estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, FSH, and thyroid hormone levels, etc. Many, many hormones. At home saliva kits. At home saliva kits are another method to check hormone levels. These kits are usually FDA approved and can be purchased from a lab near you. Companies like Everly Well offer at home hormone imbalance tests that screen for hormone imbalances. Now that we talked about all the hormones and how to determine their levels, let's see how they impact our daily lives. So I will break it down in three parts. Let's start with a normal day, the morning. It's good to eat in the morning exactly after waking up or not. The opinions are uh, divided. Several hormones are elevated when we wake up, for example, cortisol. The production of cortisol, a corticosteroid hormone, increases after a person wakes up in the morning. This is known as the cortisol awakening response, or CAR, which is an increase between 38 to 75 percent in cortisol levels, peaking at 30 to 45 minutes after awakening. What does this mean? Cortisol and insulin are two hormones that play a crucial role in the body's response to stress and regulation of blood glucose levels. Cortisol, often referred to as a stress hormone, is released by the adrenal glands when the body is under stress. Waking up in the morning is sort of a stress for the body because it needs to wake up, prepare itself, so that's a stress. One of its key functions is to promote the liver to release glycogen into the bloodstream, which is then converted into glucose, the body's preferred uh, energy source. This process raises blood glucose levels, providing immediate energy for a flight or fight response. Insulin, on the other hand, is a hormone produced by the pancreas. Its primary role is to lower the blood glucose levels by facilitating the uptake of glucose into the cells, where it is converted into energy. Insulin also stores glucose in the liver for later use. When cortisol levels are high, such as during the periods of stress, blood glucose levels also rise. In response, the pancreas produces more insulin to try to bring the blood glucose level back to normal. However, chronic stress and prolongated high cortisol levels can negatively affect insulin sensitivity and glucose regulation. Insulin in relationship with cortisol, the levels of insulin in the body can vary throughout the day and are influenced by a variety of factors in the morning, a phenomenon called dawn phenomenon or dawn effect can occur, which is 
an early morning rise in blood sugar levels. This is actually happens between 2 and 8 in the morning, so a.m. So, what does this all mean combined? In the morning, your insulin levels are usually lower than normal and your cortisol levels are typically high about 30 to 45 minutes after waking up. That means if you eat right after you wake up, you don't have enough insulin to lower your blood sugar, which converts into glucose and that stores into your liver and fatty cells for later use because it's a sort of a storage uh, of energy for later use. When you eat in the morning, these hormones work together to regulate your hunger and consequently uh, your calorie intake. However, various nutrition intake patterns from fasting to excess calories as well as foods with higher uh, glycemic load are known to impact circulating levels of these hormones. For example, a uh, western pattern diet that includes uh, increased amounts of refined carbohydrates and saturated fats and decreased amounts of fibers has been suggested to upregulate cortisol levels which can lead to eating more especially high calorie uh, palatable foods. In summary, your hormone balance in the morning can influence your calorie intake right after eating upon waking up. It is a complex interplay of various hormones that regulate hunger in society and this balance can be affected by the type and amount of food you consume. My suggestion, and uh, this is what many studies have shown, eat your breakfast after one hour after waking up. A study posted by Medical News Today showed reduced risk of diseases. One uh, 2021 systemic review of 14 observational studies found that those who eat breakfast several times per week have a reduced risk for heart diseases, diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, stroke, abdominal obesity, cardiovascular related deaths, uh, and elevated low uh, density lipoprotein, cholesterol, or LDL. Second topic, eating after 8 p.m. Eating late at night can have various effects on your health and weight. Here are some findings from studies. Weight gain. Eating late at night may contribute to weight gain. If you're eating a lot, late at night on top of your regular meals you may consume more calories uh, than your body needs leading to weight gain increased obesity risk a study by, by harvard medical school found that the timing of when we eat significantly impacts our energy expenditure appetite and molecular pathways in adipose tissue or fatty cells eating four hours late makes a significant difference for our hunger levels that we burn calories after we eat and the way we store fat. 3. Metabolic syndrome. Numerous studies show that eating late and throughout the wide eating window may increase your risk of metabolic syndrome, which includes conditions like obesity, diabetes and heart diseases. Reflux. Depending on the size and content of the meal, eating late at night could increase the risk of acid reflux. So, what is the conclusion for the second part? Eating three times a day. Try eating the breakfast one hour after waking up. Two. The second meal at around 12 to 14. The third meal no later than 18 to 20. So that would be 6 to 8 p.m. for non-Europeans. This should be your eating schedule. But we're not done yet. Calories counting. Calories counting is simple yet efficient method to weight loss. It involves uh, determining the number of calories your body needs to function and creating a calorie deficit to promote weight loss. The first law of thermodynamics says, also known as the uh, law of energy conservation, states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred or transformed. In other words, the total energy within an isolated system remains constant, which in normal English words means what goes in should go out. If you eat 2000 kilocalories per day, you should burn 2000 kilocalories per day to remain consistent with your weight. Naturally, if you eat 3000 kilocalories per day and you burn only 2000, you will be in 1000 kilocalories surplus and you of course will uh, gain weight. If you eat 1500 calories a day and you uh, burn 2000, that means you will be in minus or 500 kilocalories deficit and in time you will lose weight. One kilogram of pure fat stores around 7000 
700 kilocalories. Which means if you eat every day less, let's say um, 500 kilocalories deficit, in approximately 16 days you will lose 1 kilogram of pure fat. My advice if you want to lose weight is to lose weight constantly and not very fast and let me explain why. When you want to lose weight and eat very 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 less than usual, your body starts to think that you're starving and you are going to die. So everything you eat usually stores in fatty cells for later use to basically help you live longer when you're starving so um, the body will have energy stored. Basically, you're trying to lose weight but you're actually gaining weight because of this. The secret is to be constant, calculate your calories intake and of course work out. The diet is around 90% of weight losing. Muscles are built in the gym, but weight losing and muscle growth are made in the kitchen. Remember this. Okay, so how to calculate the number of calories you need? You can use a calorie calculator. These calculators estimate your basal metabolic rate or BMR, which is the number of calories your body needs to perform basic functions at rest, which means sleeping, breathing, walking, everything the body needs. So uh, you burn calories while sleeping too. So this is why it's important to know your basal metabolic rate or BMR to be able to calculate how much you should take and how much you will burn. What comes in should come out. Remember this, the first law of thermodynamics. Here are some popular formulas used to calculate BMR. I can list them on the screen. You can use them or easier and I don't think you want to complicate things. I know you want to make it uh, easier for you. So you can use many apps on Apple Store or Google Play, such as my favorite app, for example, MyFitnessPal. There are other apps like Omni Calculator or Calculator.net. I will put the links down in the description below so you will be able to check them out and uh, hopefully use them. MyFitnessPal uh, is one of the best apps I used. It's perfect for weight gain or weight loss, how to calculate everything and it's very, very easy. This video might be uh, very long but I will show you exactly how to calculate uh, everything. I will uh, make an example. Uh, the key of calculating your calories easily is to eat simple foods that are easily uh, scaled. For example, all the bodybuilders before the competitions eat lots of chicken breasts, eggs, rice, beans, baked potatoes, everything that is easily weighted on the scale. It doesn't have too many ingredients so it will be easier to calculate. If you have complicated foods, complex foods, it will be harder to calculate everything. If you're trying to lose weight, try sticking to simple foods. This is the app MyFitnessPal. It has a function to scan the barcode of any product you would like to eat. Just take the product, uh, point the camera at the barcode and it will automatically scan the barcode and tell you everything about the nutrition of, the, of this product. Um, here you should select the meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner or snacks. Here you select how much do you want to eat, the servings, um, I usually put uh, one milliliter and then add how many milliliters in total does it have or milligrams. For example, th this product has 500 milliliters, the whole bottle. Um, that means 20.5 grams of carbs, 7.5 grams of fat and 17 grams of protein. Don't forget to press the check mark in the right corner, upper corner of the screen, uh, otherwise it will not be saved. Also. Um, you can press on the calories number and see the calories, macros and, and nutrients. If you want to see the macros, you will need to pay a subscription to MyFitnessPal. So I didn't do that. I don't want to do that. As you can see in the nutrients section, this is what I ate today. Protein, carbohydrates, fiber, sugar, fat, saturated fats, polyunsaturated fats, etc. When you set up your account, you put your current weight and how much do you want to weigh, basically your goal. And it will tell you exactly how many calories you should eat per day in order to achieve that goal. So you can put to lose 250 grams per week, 500 or 750 grams or 1 kilogram per week. I say it's kind of too much, but you can try and see if it works for you and how your body reacts. You can check out what you ate the day, yesterday, the day before. Also, you can check the progress. You can connect your, your app with the devices like Samsung watch, Apple watch, whatever watch. Then you can press on the diary. You can see how many calories you should eat today and how much you already ate, how many exercises you did, how many steps you did. It's 
I think it's a perfect app. My advice is to add absolutely everything you eat in the app or another app you use. This is a program where you can do intermittent fasting as well. Here you can add your weight and see the graphic of your weight loss, your steps, your exercises, everything. It's perfect. As a scale, I use this um, Bluetooth scale Arbolif, easy to connect to your, um, your phone. You can see exactly how many calories your product has directly on the screen. Let's say you want to eat an apple. This apple has, for example, 201 grams. You can open the app. My fitness pal press add right apples usually the products with the green uh, check mark are the best to choose but you can choose also uh, meals added and calculated by other people here you choose the serving one medium apple save in here you can see it has 22 grams of carbs zero gra grams of fat and zero grams of protein and don't forget to press on the check mark in the right upper corner of the screen or else we, it will not be saved another very important topic is eating fat there are two types of fat and are considered bad or less healthy saturated fats and trans fats saturated fats these are usually found in animal products such as uh, dark chicken meat high fat dairy foods like milk butter cheese sour cream ice cream etc eating too much saturated fat can increase blood cholesterol levels or ldl so the bad cholesterol and trans fat trans fat these are a byproduct of a process called hydrogenation that is used to turn healthy oils into solids and to prevent them from becoming uh, rancid. They create inflammation which is linked to heart disease, uh, stroke, diabetes or other chronic conditions. So eating these types of fats in moderation as a part of a balanced diet shouldn't be harmful. However, consistently consuming high amounts of these fats can lead to health issues over time. Also, remember that eating food with a high glycemic index is also not very indicated. I will put on the screen some of the most eaten foods with a high glycemic index. It means the concentration in carbohydrates of the food. For example, white bread has the glycemic index of 100, which means 100% of the white bread will be transformed into glucose, which means it will increase the blood sugar. So it is advised to eat food with lower glycemic index. You can find them all over the internet, just google it, I'm sure you can find everywhere. Or I can find it for you and put a link down in the description below. Or preferably use my fitness pal for a couple of days, you will see what foods are good, which foods have uh, lots of fats, lots of carbs, etc. You can eat a lot of food and still be in the caloric window you need, or you can eat, for example, two McDonald's burgers and you will eat all the calories for that day. So remember, weight loss is a journey and it's important to approach it in a healthy and sustainable way. Always consult a healthcare professional before starting any weight loss plan. I hope um, this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I will try to answer them in the comments or make a separate video about it if it's a big important topic. Thank you so much for watching and if it was a good video when I explained in a good way. Maybe share it with your friends, family members who are trying to lose weight and are on a journey like this. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I will see you in the next one. Take care of your health and the health of your loved ones. Stay safe, guys. Bye!